Worldwide, banks are predicted to lose $1,600 billion in the financial crisis. Citigroup, the world's largest bank, has so far lost over $40 billion. Gloom descends over the city of London and financial centers around the world. Bankers should have seen the crash coming. There can be no excuses for losing all that money. If they had understood the cyclical pattern of economic growth, they would have avoided the reckless lending that has trapped millions of people in negative equity. Millions of families will now lose their homes. Citigroup and their competitors still do not understand what switches off the engines of growth. That's why it is always different this time when the economy crashes. But of course, it isn't. The same mechanism wrecks the economy time and again. Citigroup originated with a bank in 1812, and so it has traded through 10 18-year cycles of booms and busts, and all the evidence for those cycles are in its archives. Well, most of us would say, there, there are some exceptions, most of us would say that we, in fact, did not see uh, clearly enough what could go wrong with some of these structures, um, either in terms of leverage or in terms of the right kind of uh, risk that should be taken. Or the A lot of jargon by the chairman of Citigroup, but what it boils down to is that it couldn't anticipate the end of the good times, and yet it's lived through ten of these boom-bust cycles, and all of the evidence is in its own institution's archives. In the United States, business cycles can be traced back to the year 1800. For the 19th century, the sale of public land is the clearest index of economic growth. Each cycle averaged 18 years. Investment built to a peak and then crashed. Chicago's land values confirmed the 18-year pattern. American property experts were able to identify land as the key indicator of booms and busts. It takes a world war to put the cycle on hold. Trouble starts when land prices reach record highs. It's the land price that drives up house prices. People are priced out of the housing market while banks cash in on the increased value of land. My account of land speculation alerted the banks of the looming danger. I hoped they would curb their reckless lending. They didn't and now we are all paying the price. The business cycle is like a merry-go-round. It goes round and round in circles. This one is the latest in a medley of booms and busts that have been with us for 300 years. The alarming fact is that economists are caught off guard when the economy grinds to a halt. Citigroup is in a class of its own when it comes to losing money. It has lost more than $40 billion and is sacking thousands of its employees worldwide. But there is no mystery about the business cycle. It follows a very clear pattern. Whether you look at the evidence from Japan, Australia, America or Britain, the trends are uncannily similar. But economists play fast and loose with the theory of private enterprise, leaving politicians to sell us short with policies that cannot work. While we live under the cloud of the boom-bust cycle, no government, regardless of its political leaning, will be able to deliver on its promises. Understanding what drives business activity is the starting point for the reforms that are needed to shape policies for sensible growth. Fundamental changes are needed, but we face a catch-22 situation. During difficult times, people who are comfortable and secure in their homes will naturally resist the reforms that are necessary. But people who have lost jobs and homes will rightfully demand change. A choice has to be made.